We're driving a 2022 Genesis GV70. Coming up, I'm going to share a fact that absolutely shocked me. Really? But first, information explosion. don't know, the Genesis GV70 is a small luxury SUV. It shares its platform with the Genesis G70, which is the sedan, and we reviewed it. If you want to see our G70 review, click right up here. So we're going to do a little bit of a comparison between the G70 and the GV70, and we're going to dig deep into the family friendliness. Let's start things off with interior. Milady, what do you think about the style of the interior of the Genesis GV70? There is a lot. I think it might mostly be the color. Well, that's an excellent point, though, because it is this vivid red. But to Genesis's credit, you can get this interior in four different color schemes. There's a beige, black, blue. I think it's stylish and luxurious feeling. Yeah, one detail I like, too, is that when you have the vehicle off, this all disappears. Oh. Uh, it's all black. And then when you turn it on, it magically comes to life. So a ton of style in here. Um, what about space? One of the things that really we struggled with in the Genesis G70, which is the sedan that shares this platform, was space. This is a huge improvement on that. I feel like all passengers have plenty of leg room. We're a small family, so it really works well for us. But in a pinch, you know, like sometimes you might need an adult in the back seat, and I fit quite comfortably uh, in the second row. Cargo space is similarly great. Um, so there's 28.9 cubic feet of space um, behind the second row. And then, uh, you know, you can flip those seats down with the cool little releases on the sides. Though I have noticed one thing, which is that the seat, if you let it go, and if the front seat is in the access position, the rear seat headrest will flop into it. Mm. But I have a solution. <laughs> what about getting Kiddo in and out? She had such an easy time climbing in and out. The low height of this vehicle is excellent for getting a small person in back. Yeah, I would say that, you know, this is a, an SUV, but really it's more like a wagon, just a barely too tall wagon, but I, we can't call them wagons in America, so uh, we're gonna wink, wink, uh, <laughs> agree on the SUV nomenclature. But man, I, it's super easy to get in and out. We do not have latch flaps. Uh, the latch points for the child seat back there are exposed, but they, they are so sly and subtle that you wouldn't even know that they were there. So very easy to install a car seat. One issue though, um, door width. Oh yes, the doors don't open very wide. And um, the size of the opening as compared to the size of our seat, it was a little tight getting in it. It takes a little light finagling. Yes. And I only mentioned that because I wanted to use the word finagling in a review. <laughs> Let me talk about safety for a second, sweetie. Please, won't you let me talk about safety? I mean, it's all I ever want to talk about, really. Well then, uh, you're gonna appreciate the fact that there are eight standard airbags in the GV70. There's also a full suite of active driver assist, lane keeping assist, automatic emergency braking. In fact, this has full speed adaptive cruise control, which isn't really a safety feature, but it's included in that suite. Um, I mentioned the airbags. One of the airbags, there's a center airbag um, bet uh, between us and the front here. So if we're in an accident, uh, we won't whack into each other. Other. Sounds like something's doing some whacking back there on its own. <laughs> what are we doing? There's actually a, a hitch back there for the Bronco that we own. If you're curious about our Bronco driving adventures, click up here. So you may hear the occasional clank. I assure you that's normal. <laughs> One other really neat feature that Genesis offers on the GV70 is a rear occupant alert system. So all of them will tell you, oh, you should check the back seats if the vehicle thinks you might have left something back there. But on higher trims, there is this feature. It's an ultrasonic sensor where if you have a small human being or an animal or something in the back, uh, the ultrasonic sensor can detect movement and it will honk the horn and it can even alert you on your phone with the Genesis app that you uh, may have left something alive in the back seat, which uh, is a very reassuring thing for frazzled mothers and fathers. So family, what do we think? Is the GV70 family friendly? Yay! Family friendly. Mm -hmm. Rear window test. Oh, so close. Armrest test. So I'm driving in a comfortable eight and four, shuffling my way down the mountain. And on the inboard here, 
it's padded, but not deeply padded, and they're stitching right along the edge, and that makes it sort of an uncomfortable place to put my uh, elbow. Um, they're even height, but uh, in their okay position, I can uh, access the elbow space, but a little bit firm. And on the outboard, softer, but still not, uh, not genuinely soft. I'm going to go 50%, 35% on the inboard, 50% on the outboard. Hey, have you subscribed to our channel? If you haven't, please do. At 100,000 subs, we're going to review a windowless white van. Style! Milady, let's talk about style. With this vehicle, that's the first thing you want to talk about because the style is pretty over the top for a little SUV. So what we've got is the dual light bar motif that Genesis has incorporated into all of their modern vehicles. Um, you also got uh, some interesting details along the side, some very kind of muscular design elements like the real kind of sharp creases. And then also on the C pillar, it's almost like a reverse airplane wing. Uh, the long and the short of it is there's a lot of style here, but is it working for you? It's mostly working. The part that I don't care for is there's a lot of like really visible plastic on it. It almost in that crosshatch pattern, it yes. almost looks like um, like an evil Spider-Man should be driving it. Sorry. Arachnidude? Arachnidude, because it's off-brand. Because <laughs> it's like, it does look a little bit cheap. I think you're absolutely right. That crosshatch, it's like they're going for what looks like a grill, but it's clearly not a grill. And also the color of the plastic, um, they didn't want to go shiny, so they went kind of matte, and it almost looks pre-production. Sick bird. <laughs> I, I like, this is the only context in which saying something is pre-production could be a <laughs> sick burn. What do you guys think of the Genesis GV70 style? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Tell us in the comments. If you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, give us a follow over on Instagram. I'm mostly a helicopter and car guy. She's mostly a- Cats and kids. Cats and kids. Cats and kids. Cats and kids. <laughs> Moving on, in motion. First things first, I've noticed that ride quality is a little bit firm, even in comfort modes, and I wonder how much of that is dependent on our specific vehicle's 21-inch wheels. Um, yeah, a little bit firm, however, that's not a bad thing because that firmness cues you that this is kind of an on-road focused kind of SUV. As you drive it around, um, its car-like qualities are quite apparent. It's very quiet in here, by the way, so great uh, noise um, uh, control. But uh, coming around the corner here, there is a, a, a precision to the steering that I like. It's also a little bit heavy, but again, that's sort of conveying um, sporty vibes. It's like the people who designed the car wanted to let you know it's okay to have fun with it. Aw, thanks guys. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a joke under the joke that I'm not quite getting, but I'm just gonna roll with it. Reasonably quick reactions from the uh, paddle shifters. And then we're just gonna go a little bit zippy, family. Let's see, how do we feel? Going zippy, 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 zippy. Oh. Yeah, the seatbelts kind of squeeze you down when they're like, they're, oh, they're, too zippy. Yeah, yeah, the people are like, hey, go have fun with the car. Not that much fun. <laughs> It's interesting because it's built on the same platform as the G70. Um, the GV70 that we're driving here, I think is ultimately less capable in the corners, but in some ways I prefer that because the joy of driving quickly is kind of like playing with that edge and you can approach the edge in this a little bit more easily. It's the, uh, the old um, adage about it's better to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. Mm. If you paid attention to the information explosion, you will know that we are driving the uh, V6, that's a 3.5 liter V6. Let's put it into Sport Plus, go around this corner here, and then I'm gonna punch it as we come out of the uh, left-hander here, and we'll see if the uh, V6 is capable of generating fun for the Musio family. What do we think? It sounds fun, too. It does sound fun, let's try it again. Let's go faster, Wee! When I was driving it, I did not get to appreciate the finer audible qualities of it. <laughs> yeah, I think the uh, 3.5 liter V6 is uh, pretty fantastic. It's a ton of power, um, certainly for our needs, and then it's matched by brakes that have a very firm feel, very confident feeling. I think this is a great driving package. But what does Sweetie think? Sweetie's at the wheel. Baby, how do you feel about the visibility in the GV70? Well, I like it, you see? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. At least out of that window. <laughs> out this window, as usual, this pillar is really intrusive, and the one behind it is also very thick. A thick B and a thick C. Yeah. Hmm. 
Mm, we have a confused iguana. <laughs> What about fun? So we got some curves here. Um, do you enjoy driving the GB70? I do. It feels plenty powerful enough for when I'm, um, I've pulled over because I'm too slow and I need to make my way back onto the road. I love that that's how you use power. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, because I'm so much slower <laughs> than everybody else. Uh -huh, so plenty of power. Yeah, the steering feels weighted, but sure. Like, it feels very precise. I like it. Yeah, those are uh, excellent observations. I don't know if I could do better myself, but maybe I will try. Good job, sweetie. <laughs> Overall, I think the Genesis GV70 is a great driving vehicle. I really uh, like driving it around. By the way, I don't do this nearly often enough, but thank you to everyone on Patreon who supports us. You guys are really, really nice. You get early access to our videos, and we appreciate your kind support because helicopter fuel is not cheap. Moving on, emotion factor. Sweetie, do you think there's an emotion factor here? Oh, heck yeah. This does not feel like you're driving some boring SUV around. There's so much style inside and out. Huge emotion factor. Plus, it's a real joy to drive, and there's a ton of great features, which we're going to get to in a few seconds. The emotion factor for me as a colossal cheap <laughs> which you might think, you own a helicopter and a Bronco, you're not a cheap <laughs> Trust me, we're cheap in other ways. That's how we made that happen. Totally. But uh, the point being that um, the joys that you have with the vehicle, I think, are enhanced by its uh, comparative frugality. So, I completely agree. Yeah. That's a big factor for me. Yeah, at least from a musical perspective, the emotion factor is high. If you're feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Genesis GV70 of your very own, click the Kelly Blue Book listing link in the description below. Remarks! At the beginning of the video, I said that there was a fact about the GV70 that I found to be shocking. Are you ready to be shocked? I am. <laughs> I mean, I already have been a little bit. The crazy thing about the GV70 is that compared to the G70, which shares its platform, the GV70 is more efficient. What? The EPA combined fuel economy numbers are better in the GV70 than the G70. The GV70 is bigger, it's heavier, and it has more horsepower than a comparative G70. How in the heck are they doing this? I don't know. <laughs> I think it has to be some sort of quirk of the EPA uh, test cycle. It's baffling, but it is true. Well, great. That does lead to um, another point. We're driving the 3.5 liter V6. The base engine is a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. But if you look at those, uh, those uh, power numbers, that's still plenty of power. That's a raucous good time. Say that. Would you like to have a raucous good time? <laughs> Feel free to get the base engine. But if you're ready for some grade A shenanigans, and I mean grade A, then maybe you want the 3.5 liter V6. Let's give it a go now, shall we? Oh, oh boy. Old timey voice. Going further in the G70 versus GV70 comparison, the GV70's base price is about $3,500 pricier than the G70. However, the GV70 comes with all-wheel drive standard. Oh. And if you add all-wheel drive to the G70 sedan, that adds a little more than $2,000 to the price. So let's say there's maybe like a $1,300, $1,400 price premium to get the GV70 versus the equivalent G70. That's not a very big price premium. And with the GV70, in addition to all-wheel drive standard, you also get this larger infotainment screen, which is 14.5 inches. Normally, I would say you would choose the smaller vehicle for the fuel economy, but that's not a factor. It's not a factor. It's baffling. We should dig into the infotainment system. Uh, the infotainment for me works fine, generally speaking. I like the fact that it's still a touchscreen, even though it's a far reach, but normally you control it with this knob down here. However, this knob has a bit of confusion. I kept grabbing the wrong knob. Hey, we did it! <laughs> the hat trick with the iguana! We did it, everybody, and you said it couldn't be done. So wrong knob problem, huh? Yeah, it's a real problem. <laughs> yeah, see, you've got two round knobs here, and unless you're looking um, and really familiar with the vehicle, it's easy to grab the, the, the drive selector instead of the infotainment knob. One other bit of weirdness, I couldn't get the navigation system to stop. I couldn't get it to stop either. <laughs> And then you got in, and I assumed it would stop doing that when I shut off the vehicle, but apparently not. Yeah, you had a destination selected, and like I was really looking for a way to stop it. I couldn't figure it out. 
So there may be some light complexities, um, some peculiarities of the system that you have to adapt to. But overall, I think it's, it's nice. One thing I really like about this setup, it has the optional 360 degree camera system. It has some very, very cool angles. For even more visibility, this has the optional blind spot camera system that shows what's in your blind spot when the turn signal is activated right in the gauge cluster. And then also, um, if you have a narrow parking spot, you can use the remote parking feature to drive into the spot. So if you have like a narrow garage or something like that, it's so easy, a child can use it. Thank you, child. <laughs> One more interesting feature in our vehicle, this has the optional 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and it's 3D. It's the kind of thing that's very cool to show your neighbor or to look at while stationary, but I find that when driving, you wanna be able to very, very quickly see what's in the gauge cluster so I can get back to looking at what's uh, what we're gonna hit. I feel like it takes a beat for my eyes to figure out what's happening here mm -hmm. and then go back out to the real world. What, what was your experience? Well, as you know, I generally struggle with 3D anything, like mm -hmm. I hate 3D movies. I'm Engaging with the world. <laughs> it's three dimensions out there. It's so hard. I know. I really disliked trying to use that. It just seemed blurry most of the time to me. Mm -hmm. That might be your bad eyes or that yeah. might be your great judgment. Can I make a trim recommendation? Of course. I'm going to recommend that for uh, most people, the absolute base trim $41,000 GV70 is fine. Totally wow. fine. It comes with all the things you'd want. Smart key access. It's got the smart cargo uh, hatch. So you can just walk up with the key in your pocket and after three seconds, it'll automatically go up, which is really cool. Plenty of power with the uh, the 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. It even has heated front seats. To me, that's plenty of vehicle. Um, if we were spending our own money, then that'd probably be the one we'd go with. If you're we spending somebody else's money, this is the one we'd go with. <laughs> Do you know about the competitive set, my sweet? I do because I read the list you wrote. <laughs> There's the BMW X3, the Mercedes Benz GLE, GLC, GLC, da, and uh, Audi Q5 would be another one. Um, if you're looking for a, a bargain price one, um, Acura RDX mm -hmm. would be another one to consider. The base price for most of those vehicles does not include all-wheel drive. Ta if you take like the Audi Q5 for example, and you put all-wheel drive on it, that's thousands of dollars more than you'd pay for the Genesis GV70. I'd also has that 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty, and I think there's just a strong value angle that mm -hmm. uh, if you're willing to be a little bit adaptable with the uh, premium vehicle you drive, that the Genesis GV70 might make a lot of sense. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comments section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Genesis GV70, it's like they took the G70, which we really, really liked, but then for a very, very, very small price increase, like 3% price bump versus an equivalent G70, they've solved all of the problems and made it much, much tastier, a much better experience. To me, it's like getting bacon mm. on your uh, gastropub burger. The GV70 is the baconized gastropub burger of luxury SUVs. If you're curious what we're driving or flying between YouTube videos, give me a follow over on Instagram. You want to see what her family's up to, give Evie a follow. If you like this video, feel free to hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos, do you dare? Feel free to hit subscribe. Family, I think we have successfully reviewed the Genesis GV70. Can I have a five and a five? And you, come get your high five. Ah!